So this very well could be the weirdest video I've ever posted. I am sitting outside in my backyard, my glass window here, my hose here. I have this, I don't know if you can see, on a chair, which the wind is blowing and it's like making it do that. But anyways, I'm sitting here. I've got a uh, lemonade. Yes, I'm a child. I've got a lemonade that I made myself and I'm sitting on a pizza. This really couldn't be any better of a time to do a UFA video. If this can just stay still for a second while I put my hair up, we can finally get into this. And uh, I apologize for being out here and stuff, but like, it's hella nice out and it's summer and I thought, Selena, you really should be professional. And then I was, oh yeah, yeah, I'm not leaving my hair like that. I thought to myself that I should be more professional and I'm sure the audio won't be amazing because there's cars passing by and it's a little bit windy. And yes, this keeps on moving. I'm gonna try and figure out how to stop that. But at the same time, it's like, I'm 20. This isn't gonna be my career and like, Everybody likes to have fun, right? Okay, stop. So please excuse all of this outside distraction with all of the motorbikes like ripping it around corners and stuff. Um, I'm gonna try and talk to you today about the Leafs UFAs, particularly the top three that we have. Now for some reason, all year I knew which UFAs we had, but I was blanking this past week. I was like, oh my God, okay, Tyler Pozak, JVR, and who, and who? Komarov, that was the guy I was missing. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit now and just basically tell you who I think we should keep, who I think we should let go, and who, in my opinion, I actually think is gonna stay. Okay, so hopefully this stops the shaking of the chair and everything. So the first person I'm gonna be talking about is obviously our number one, James Van Riemsdyk. Um, in my opinion, I really think that he, that we're in his rearview mirror right now because there's like no way in hell he's coming back. We're not paying him what he wants, what he deserves, so I really don't see, like we're not gonna give him the terms either that he wants, like you're, this needs to stop. I don't see us giving him a lengthy contract with a lot of money, so really, there's there's no conversation. Like, he, he is definitely gone. I mean, obviously, there's the argument that, yeah, we're a strong contender. My neighbors. Obviously, there's the argument that we're strong contenders right now, and, like, why would he bother going somewhere else if we're just going to get a shot at the cup this year or next year? But then at the same time, like, how much of a pay cut are you willing to take to win the Stanley Cup? Obviously, that's the dream, but at the same time, you want to get paid. And again, rightfully so. JVR scored 36 goals last year, which is amazing. And yes, he will be hard to replace, but then again, he's only scored 30 goals one other time in his career. And he's come close two other times, but you know, close isn't 30. Obviously he was amazing last year, but I really do think that we have the depth that we need to be able to release him into the wild. Not to the wild, Courtney, into the wild. I really hope this doesn't turn out terribly because I can already tell once I start editing this, if it sounds horrible, I'm gonna be irritated. I'm editing outside today as well, so that's something fun. So to me, and I'm sure to a lot of you out there, JVR is basically already gone. He just has to sign the papers. So yes, I'm gonna miss him. Obviously he was great to have on the team and he's been this consistent guy that we've had for a while. Ever since we traded Phil Kessel, yes, JVR has been like almost the guy, which is weird, him and Kadri, I don't know. It, it was just a weird couple of years there. But now, and we, we have to let him go. There's nothing we can do. There's I don't want to say there's no spot for him on the team because obviously there's always spot for talent, but I think we have enough talent and I'm sorry to say that. JVR, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful career somewhere else and I wish you all the best. Okay, now moving on to Tyler Bozak. <laughs> I don't want him to leave. I've said it on Twitter like a bunch of times and I've said it to my friends and my family and everyone that I can. I'm gonna put this down because you can really hear the ice swishing around in there, it's good. I'm. I don't wanna, I don't wanna let Bozak go for multiple reasons. Number one, he was my first favorite player. Like for the better for the better part of a decade, he's been my favorite player. He's always been underrated. He's been like the underdog. The Leafs were the first team to sign him and he was undrafted originally. So to have him play out his career here would be my ultimate goal. I think I've said this before in, in videos too, but I, I just don't wanna see him go. I'm sorry for the dogs barking. I don't wanna see him go. I know he has to go. Well, actually out of all of them, I think that we might be able to keep him but the thing is, okay, yes, he's one of the longest serving Leafs, he's a centerman and all that good stuff. While I do think he was underrated as a player, uh, I think that the Leafs paid him a decent amount. Sorry for that, I'll say it again. I do think the Leafs paid him a decent amount. They really only gave him that term and that amount of money because they wanted to keep Phil Kessel here, which we all, we all know how that turned out. Do you pay the guy who's probably gonna be a third or fourth line center $4.5 million a year at least to play out the rest of his career here? Is that a smart move? Especially with all the contracts we have coming up, I really don't think we can afford to pay 
I don't want to call him old because he's not too old. I'll wait for that. He's 32, and I know that there's a lot of people out there, a lot of teams who could use him, like Montreal or Pittsburgh. So do I think he's going to stay? It might be my bias talking because I really do want him to stay, but uh, let's, I give it a 50-50 chance. I do think that he has the highest chance of staying out of everyone, all of our UFAs. My shade is leaving me, so I'm going to have to find another spot to sit soon. Just pull this in closer. There, I'll stay here until the sun hits me. So let me just say again, I love the guy. Whether he takes a hometown discount or not is up to him. And either way he goes, I don't want him to go though. I really don't want him to go. I'm already thinking about what songs I'm gonna listen to when he's gone. Louis, watch this, Pizza Pocket, okay? Sorry for the cars, I'm just gonna fuck around while I wait for them. Pizza Pocket, it's a hug. <laughs> pull this a little closer, there you go, is that better? There's less wind over here and you can't hear the cars. I don't know why I didn't start over here first. And now we move on to Leo Komarov. He's just come off a four year contract with us. So he's he's been exactly what we want him to be. I can't really complain about him. Again, if he comes back, he will be our third or fourth center and he's huge on penalty kills. So I guess if we do lose him, we will lose that. But at the same time, I kind of think we have people to take his spot and not to say he's bad or anything, but we got a lot of good Marlies. I don't know if you guys have seen a lot of Marlies games. I have, and I also I just saw one recently. I can't remember what that thing is. Oh yeah, the Calder Cup. I watched them win the Calder Cup. Um, yeah, sorry, I lost track of thought. I, I, I met Travis Dermott. People have been proposing moving Nylander to center. Um, I don't know how, I don't know if I'd like that or not. I guess it's okay if you need to, obviously, because you don't have any centermen, because it's we have like two centermen here, and then we got like Polak and more who are, and Placanics actually, who's a free agent. But no one thought that they were going to be coming back. And by the way, these are just my honorable mentions list. I don't really think any of these guys are coming back. Polak, um, Dominic Moore, and Thomas Bucanics. But I know I said top three in this video, but whatever. We'll, we'll give the guys their light. Do I think Komarov is coming back? I actually, this one for some reason, other than JVR, obviously, I definitely think he's not coming back. If he does come back, I will be surprised. Um, again, like Montreal could use him. Pittsburgh, uh, people who need their center depth. They could use them, no problem. And for the amount of money that they deserve and that they want, I don't really think that we can keep them on. I mean, we have Nylander, Marner, and Austin Matthews. Like, their, their contracts are going to be coming up this year and next year. So, do you sign these older guys or do you set aside some money for the guys who are going to carry this franchise? So, we'll just get to Roman Polak. I really, really, really hope that he does not come back this year. I hope he didn't come back last year as well. I remember myself thinking that. The fact that he played last year was a miracle, like, put into play by Babcock because... He loves him. I don't know why he loves him. I know he talks about grit and all this stuff, but I don't know why he loves him. Maybe it's the money. Maybe it's like the one year, one million dollar thing. Yeah, okay, I get that. But he's just slow. He's just a slow motherfucker. If Polak is not secretly Babcock's cousin, I don't know why he's on the team. Again, I would talk more about mechanics or more, but I, I don't see them coming back. So yeah, I'm sure there's a million articles online you can go look at or like videos and whatever. Who will talk more in depth about those. I'm sorry for the plane, could you stop? It might just be my own stupid opinion, but honest to God, I don't think they're coming back, so I'm not gonna even waste time on them. Placanix is going straight back to Montreal, in my opinion. He said he wants to, Montreal said they would have him back and everything, so I'm not saying he's shit or anything, because he definitely found his stride in the playoffs with us, but I, I don't see him here, I don't see him here. So if you by chance think this is a shit video just because I left out a few guys that um, like shouldn't even have been on the team this year, Sorry, shoot me, okay? I'm I'm giving you my opinion. This is what you're here for, and that's what you get. Dominic Moore was a healthy scratch for like a good chunk of the season. Do you really think they're gonna sign him again? When you're paying a guy and decide not to play him, that doesn't bode well for me, and I, I definitely think that the Leafs are just gonna let him go. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the top three UFAs, and a few little thoughts on the other ones. Uh, let me know what you guys think, because I, I honest to God think that we might have a chance with Bozak, but that could just be my bias speaking, which I am fully open about. Like. I'm, I'm pretty biased. <laughs> Give me some reasons why you think these three will stay or go. And with that, I tip my cap to you, even though I'm not wearing one. And I say, you know, enjoy your summer. Enjoy your summer, because this is really the last of, like, the news. Well, no, obviously, once they get signed and all the stuff will be the last of the news. But this is the last big thing. Like, the draft just happened, the awards just happened, and now this. And really, it's just like a, a nothing summer now. Nothing like, no hockey is what I meant. I'm still going to be doing videos in the off-season about hockey. They're going to be hockey-related, but just, like, not news, but just fun stuff, so definitely look forward to that. And maybe, I don't know, tell me what you think of this outside setting, if the audio is shit or whatever. I might do it again, because getting to sit outside and edit is like my dream.